Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a recap of the long-awaited HBO original series, Insecure. Season 4, episode 1, entitled Low-Key Feeling Myself. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. We see items from an upcoming event, concert, t-shirts, pamphlets, brochures, all of these things for an upcoming event. And we see Isa on the couch and she says to someone on the phone, honestly, I don't F with Molly anymore. We then see that the time period that we're going to is four months before the block party. We see that Issa is sitting up her apartment and it looks like she's getting ready to relax. She has her hair up, candles lit, warm towels. And then we see Molly at the door and they say in unison, self-care Sunday. They're excited about rolling blunts, doing some yoga and having some relaxation time. And Issa says, you know, I'm finally taking some time out for myself. I mean, I don't have a job, no man. I finally got my place together I know it seems like that's not much but it's all coming together and Molly says yeah you know I'm going through some stress and work is just okay but it's all coming along well and they partake in weed and yoga we then see that Issa meets up with Condola because they need to have a follow-up meeting concerning the mixer. They're confirming if they have drinks, check, food, check, information on the pamphlets, notes that they need to have, potential sponsors, and etc. And Issa is saying, we got this, it's all under control, we're just all getting it together, and they're excited. And we notice that Condola, she gets a text that makes her smile and really brings her a lot of happiness. And Issa wants to know, who is this new? boo she's talking to she says it's somebody really special and it's actually been going strong for one month we see molly and andrew they're still hanging out and they're having a nice fun night of bowling they are trash talking flirting looking at each other in the eyes and hugging one another and sparks are definitely flying and andrew seems like he's having fun and so is molly there is this hysterical scene that happens when we see Issa and this random new guy and it's this awkward sex and Issa is saying well you know what this position isn't working for me okay let's let's just try another one okay I, this one isn't working for me either and the guy says man you know I'm really trying hard to please you but I'm turning you around and flipping you around like you're a Rubik's Cube girl they figure out that the position that works for them is traditional whole missionary. And they finally get what they need at the end of the night. He's making jokes with her saying, you know, it takes a while for a nice thickums like me to get you where you need to be. But that missionary was popping. They share a nice little laugh. And he says, you know what? You really need to fix the AC. And you being the property manager, that's really, really important. And that's major foreshadowing for the future. And she says, well, you know, it's only 65 degrees outside. He's like, well, you really, really need to get that fixed because it can get hot. He gives her some Hennessy and says, hey, this is on behalf of TSA and tells her to have a good night. Molly and Issa, they meet up at a nice little retail store and we start to see that Issa is exchanging and bringing back items back and forth because she's trying to keep up with Condola's image she doesn't want to seem like she can't afford to get some nice clothes and molly takes note of that and then we notice that molly's comments seem a little condescending and Issa explains some information about her sponsors and how they may not match the reputation of condola but she's really really trying and molly says well wow you're actually getting some real sponsors huh and we can see that Issa's pretty insulted but she doesn't say anything and Molly keeps saying that, oh, this might be your first event and, you know, you might pull some stuff together, but you have a lot of things to bring to the table. So really just these upper cup comments that are kind of below the belt. She tells Issa that, hey, Andrew, you know, he wanted me to ask you that, is it okay for him to invite, you know, Nathan to this event? And Issa says, well, no, that wouldn't be a good idea. You know, don't invite him, but thanks for letting me know. The store clerk tells her, hey, you can't keep doing this, but Issa lets her know under her breath, you can't tell me what to do. 
Issa meets Condola at her job and they're talking about all of these business endeavors that are going to happen. They're connecting on a business level. They're sharing some laughs and they look like they're really connecting as friends. And then we see Tiffany. She enters the meeting room and she says, wow, I can't believe that you two are really getting it together and getting some good ideas going. And she can't help but to notice some nice flowers that are on her desk. And Condola says, yeah, you know, you not only brought Issa and I together, but you connected me with somebody special. And Issa is just wondering, who is this special guy? And she informs her that she met that guy at Tiffany's baby shower. And Issa starts to say, well, there weren't that many guys there. So who are you talking to? And Condola says, well, you know, it's this guy named Lawrence. And then there's this awkward silence in the room. And you could tell that Issa is in shock. And Condola says, well, do you guys know each other? And then there's more awkward silence. And Tiffany says, look, they're exes, okay? They were together, now they're not. So that's it. You can tell that Condola is kind of bothered and uncomfortable about it. But Issa laughs it off as if she's not hurt and says, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, it's just a small town and you know, why don't you tell me the exes that you that, that you had so I can start dating them? He he he. So this this awkward, very awkward energy that's in the room. After she learns such a thing, Issa leaves the building and she starts to have all of these hysterical imaginings of Condola and Lawrence having sex. And it is hilarious because that's what she's thinking about. Condola meets Lawrence for some nice chill time and she doesn't look like she's in the mood. And Lawrence asks her, hey, you know, is everything okay? And she tells him, look, I think my friend, I think I'm working with your ex. And she tells him the news and she's like, I'm helping her and I'm friends with her, but I, I just want to know and I kind of feel uncomfortable. And she wants to know how long they were together and he tells her they were together for five years and she's thinks that's pretty significant and wants to know that should she continue on working with her and Lauren says yeah you should keep working with her you know we ended we're not together anymore and of course you know she needs you now and you guys have come so far on this project so it lets us know that Condola isn't a jerk she really considers other people's feelings and is not thinking about herself so so far I like this new character it's the day of the block party preceding in order to convince sponsors to donate to the official block party. And Issa's brother is helping her put together everything and he's also offered to DJ. And another comical moment, we see another resident that shouts down to Issa like, hey girl, you know, your brother is fine. Is he single? And Issa says, yeah, he's single, but he's gay. And she's like, girl, that's all right. You know, my son's father is gay. She just blows that over her shoulder like it doesn't even matter. We then see Condola. She arrives and there's this awkward hug of, hey, uh, girl. And they seem to kind of brush it under the rug and want to keep things pushing. And she tells Issa, it looks like everything's, you know, coming along. And I'll just go over here to help. Andrew and Molly, they're headed to the party, and we notice more comments that raise our eyebrows from Molly. And she says, Hey, you know, we're going to this party. You know, it's my home girl trying to put stuff together. So, you know, she's trying. You know what I mean? Kind of this energy of don't expect much from this event that we're supposed to go to. And Andrew says, jokingly, So basically, I could have saved this outfit. And another condescending comment, Molly says, please, Urban Outfitters. So she's kind of downplaying the clothes that he wears. And he brushes that off and says, hey, you know, I wanted to know when we could reconnect next week. I mean, I'm busy next Friday, but any other day is cool. And Molly says, well, <laughs> what do you have going on? Are you like have a date or something like that? And he says, well, yeah, I'm, I'm dating other people, aren't you? She says, well, yeah, I mean, of course I'm dating other people. And he says, oh, okay. And you seem surprised. And she's like, no, you know, you got dates. You got dates on dates on dates. So it's this awkward energy in the car. And once again, her personality, instead of being honest and letting people know what's on her mind, she has these mean, condescending, insulting comments that she's saying to people. 
So Issa, she's dressed up. She's ready to meet up with some potential sponsors. And we see Kelly, she's serving some drinks. And Issa's telling her, look, this liquor has to last throughout the night. Don't, you know, fill everybody's cup. Kind of ration it so it can last. And Kelly's telling her, hey, look, that guy over there offered me five figures for a night of passion. You just say the word. And Issa's like, I would never tell you to say the word. Don't do anything like that and Kelly is just like you know hey it is what it is so Issa she tries to be discreet and says you know what if you like knew somebody like you had a female friend and y'all were really really cool but you found out that she's talking to your ex what what would you what would you do and Kelly said well I had that situation happen to me but you know she's in jail because you know I framed her because I don't play that we see that they have Cheryl from Dinaggio. She is a vendor. And Issa and Condola, they want to speak to her to try to get her bid. And as they're talking to her, they're talking over one another. They keep blending in their sentences and they're trying to compliment each other at the same time. And it's this talking at the same time energy. And Tiffany is just like, hey, you guys sound like a conference call. Like, I'm over it. And Issa tries to explain what the event is about, and she really can't put it into words well. And Condola notices that and tries to save the day and says, you know what, maybe we should split up. I'll take the sponsors on this side, and you take the sponsors on this side. Let's talk to all of the sponsors separately. And Issa realizes how unprepared she is and how maybe on the business tip she's not as experienced as Condola. Molly and Andrew see Mr. TSA at the front door and he's telling them how lit the party is and that he needs to pat them down to get in. And he's like, oh, wait, I went into TSA mode. It's OK. Just walk in right there and have fun. It's going to be fun. They go in and Molly seems really uninterested now in him and letting him know, hey, you know, get some drinks and mingle, mingle walk around. I'm going to go talk to my girl Issa. And he's just like, OK, because he's noticing now that she's being really distant and kind of pushing him off. So Molly tells Issa like, hey, girl, how you doing? You know, I'm happy that you're having your event and everything. But girl, he told me that he's dating other people. And Issa says, well, OK. And she really doesn't seem like she's bothered by that. Like you guys are having fun. You're dating. And why wouldn't he date? And Molly seems kind of surprised that she's not on her side about this and molly is just like well okay in the midst of them talking all of a sudden we hear a very vulgar song my neck and my back from kaya but it's being played around this very upscale crowd and it makes people feel really uncomfortable and she's telling her brother you gotta turn this song off and if you're gonna play something like that it, le it at least needs to be edited and unfortunately we see a lot of the sponsors and vi visitors start to leave and Issa takes this moment to gather her thoughts before she panics. She puts her notes down because she wants to read notes. And then you could tell she has this epiphany that she just wants to talk to the potential sponsors from her heart. And she says, you know, this event, this block party that I'm trying to do is not only putting a spotlight on black businesses, but bringing it to an area where most audience can't see what's going on. We want to make them more aware. We want them to see themselves. So she's really explaining how important this event is. And we do see more sponsors start to turn around and come back and really take interest in what she's saying. And they start to draw closer to her and they start to fill out sponsorship slips. Molly talks with Andrew and instead of telling her him that it bothers her that he's dating other people, she still doesn't say what's on her mind and she has this harsh energy and she says, well, I'm going to stay here with my girl Issa and help out and, you know, kind of giving that indication that I'm staying here. And I don't know what you're going to do. And he asks her, is everything OK? She goes, yeah, I'm just going to stay here. And um, yeah. And he says, well, you know, I'll just. I'll just take a lift home. She's like, yeah, you do that. And he sees that she's being really, really mean. And she didn't even question or ask that if he needed a ride home. When he mentioned lift, she just seemed like she was throwing him away. 
After the crowd goes away and it's getting late, we do see Kelly and Tiff tell Issa how proud they are and how everything turned out and that her speech was beautiful and that she didn't need the notes. All that she needed to do was just say what was on her mind and on her heart. And they give her loves and hugs and Kelly says, hey, I'm about to go talk to the Spencer guy over here. Issa, can, all she could do is roll her eyes like, okay, girl. My, Molly finally tells Issa that she's bothered at the fact that Andrew is dating other people and you know she thinks that they're not gonna be together anymore and Issa says well I thought you guys were having fun I mean I don't see why maybe you should talk to him and Molly is just not taking that for an answer and she still seems pretty pissed and Molly says you know I found out that this condola girl I mean, she's dating Lawrence, and how come you didn't tell me? And Issa tries to tell her, girl, I tried to call you several times to let you know about the situation, but I had so much I had to do. And Molly says, oh, that's just interesting. You know, you know, you can be pretty messy, right? And Issa is shocked that she's just sounding so mean and says, wow, I, okay. She says, yeah, I guess y'all just supposed to be friends now and everything's supposed to be cool. And she's like, well, you know, the girl showed up to the event. She was respectable and she helped me. So, I mean, I guess all I have to do is really get over it. I mean, they're hanging out. I mean, what can I do? Molly takes this tone like she's just really upset that she can get over Lawrence and it's not such a big deal. As Issa goes away to start putting stuff up off the tables, Molly, Molly finally texts Andrew to tell him how she feels and to let him know, hey, I was tripping and the reason why I was acting that way is because I really like you and I'm sorry. And we do see that Andrew is typing something to her back, but we don't see what that is yet. We then see Condola and Lawrence. They finally get to the level where they're intimate. Issa thanks her in a text telling her that thanks for all of the help. And as Issa is cleaning up, we do start to see the tension and energy between Issa and Molly. And that is the end of the episode. It's really obvious that Molly has an issue with maybe other people being successful and maybe other people not always being down in the dumps. And if things are 100% great, she seems as if she has an issue with Issa trying to pick up the pieces and to be a better person. She's pushing away a lot of people. And you know what they say, when people start to do that, they begin bullyish behavior. And we're seeing that with Molly and she's really, really unhappy about something she is she unhappy about her job is she unhappy about her work life something isn't settling with molly and going from the beginning of the episode where Issa's talking to someone on the phone telling them hey i really don't deal with molly anymore we can make a good guess that all of the tension and all of this anger will finally explode somewhere in this season let me know what you think subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and also follow me on instagram at the same profile name official bun underscore e until next time next sunday i'll see you then bye